the fuse has been lit, it's Wednesday night, Denise and Reg, go sign a mic, come and get your Easter eggs, it's a dub, middle of the week, it's A-E-Dub, dynamic wrestling and end your night with us, it's a must, it's dynamite, it might combust, speak now, we're gonna give you all the recap, live on YouTube is where you see that, the Cali connection with the Welcome to the AEW Dynamite Post Show. It is Wednesday, April 10th, and this is the show that I am most stressed for ever to do a post show on because this, Reg, you and I haven't even discussed this on air, off air. I don't know what your thoughts were on what we saw here today with the CM Punk Jack Perry backstage footage. I have no idea where you're going to land on and how different or similar it's going to be on where I'm landing on all of this. I don't know where the chat is going to be on this. All I'm going to say is I know that this is going to be a controversial episode, probably the most controversial that we have ever done. Before we get to that, Reg, how are you? Welcome to the show. Breathe. Your favorite rapper, your favorite writer, your favorite podcaster, Righteous Reg, I'm in the building, and I'm going to start this show by shouting out the brand new world champion, Cody Rhodes, Denise Salcedo. What do you want to talk about? Oh, my God. What a shit show. Reg, <laughs> that's a great way to start this off. What do you want to talk about? Well, my friends, we are going to discuss the CM Punk Jack Perry footage, my heart's pounding. Ooh. And we're also going to talk about Will Ospreay throwing a shot at Triple H. Those are really going to be the two topics that are carrying us over. So let's just dive right the hell in on all of this. So on Saturday, it was announced that we would be seeing this backstage footage of this fight that we know occurred between Jack Perry and CM Punk at All In. AEW's biggest show. And this all led to, uh, we still, we, by the way, we have not actually seen the footage of the moment where Tony Khan felt feared for his life. Was because that was, that was a whole, I was going to say, does that, does that count? What yeah, we saw? That was it. That was it. No, there's got to be more, Reg. No, that was it. We saw it. There's got to be more. When CM Punk goes off to the side and he's arguing, that's it. We saw it. No, there's no way he feared for his life after that. We saw it. What do you mean? No, I, I can't believe. No, that was it. We saw it. That was the whole thing. We saw it on video right there. You watched it. I are you. You watched it. I feel like there had to have been more after that that happened Denise, particularly between CM Punk and Tony Khan for him to. Fear you for watched life. it, homegirl. You watched it. You saw it with your eyes today like we all did. Well, it kind of makes it a little bit bad now, doesn't it? For whom? Well, let's talk about this. So <laughs> I'm like blown away right now. All right. So we get this video. It's introduced by the Bucks. And this is basically correlating or they're making it part of their feud with FTR. And as we know, this match is happening at Dynasty. Now, what we know that came out of all of this, this led to Jack Perry being suspended. And this eventually led to CM Punk being terminated by AEW. So let's start off with your initial impression when you saw this backstage footage. Denise, I want to start out by saying I'm old school. I've been watching pro wrestling since probably 1992. I've loved this business for a long time. I've been in ba I've been backstage. I've been in a wrestling match. I've done I've done it, you guys. I've seen the worst situations. I've seen the best situations. I've seen everything. Coming into all of this uh, brawl out, every situation, I've always been. This is pro wrestling. All of this is so pro wrestling and on the line. So why are we so up in arms about this? Immediately after watching this video, my brain said that was the most pro wrestling thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. Why are we arguing about this? We need to be making money off of this. Denise, there's a wrestling show that people love called Dark Side of the Ring that is 
filled with moments like this. I'm I'm talking about legit almost every single episode. They're like, and then at one point backstage, blah, blah, blah. She is, I got in a fight with blah, blah, blah. We broke it up. And then afterwards we had beers. This is just so pro wrestling and on the line that that's all I can feel about it. Like, I know there's a bunch of stuff personally that people have attached to this. I have no personal anything to do. So when I watched, I was like, this is just pro wrestling. Like if this, if they were like, this isn't real, this isn't anything we're about to show a video of like, oh yeah, that's a cool pro wrestling video. This is all feels so pro wrestling to me. So when everyone is just like, ah, this is crazy. I'm like pro wrestling, a pro wrestling thing just happened. Two co-workers fault. It's different. There's like assault, there's blah, blah, blah. Yes, I agree. In every other profession, if you're in an office drinking coffee and you run up on your homeboy and you guys start squabbling, yo, start getting lawsuits and blah, blah, blah. You're backstage at a Madonna concert and you see another one of your uh, backup dancers. You're like, I I'm going to fuck this bitch up. You can't. You're crazy. They're backstage at something that is built. This business is built off of this shit. It's built off of exactly what we saw here. So what's the problem, you guys? Why are we up in arms about this? This is so pro wrestling that I can't help to feel anything beyond that. Now, I know. This is crazy, Denise, for a wrestling company to essentially show someone that's on another TV show, another wrestling company at the forefront. He just was in 70,000 people in front of 70,000 people and they were all chanting his name. And I didn't come out of this thinking CM Punk is uh, whatever they thought. I think I was like, oh, that's funny. That fool was wild in backstage. He attacked Jack like, yo, that's crazy. Like, I don't think like I don't think anybody's lives are in danger. That's just me as someone that's seen people die. I don't think anybody's lives are in danger. It's just like, this is pro wrestling, you guys. What's going on here? But that's just me. How did you feel initially off of it, Denise? So when I watched the video, my thoughts were, wow, I was expecting so much more. I was expecting to be appalled by CM Punk's actions. And I think that's where I wasn't necessarily as appalled, you know? And I know people are going to be like, of course, it's not okay to go up, like you said, to your coworker and mm -hmm. punch them or anything like that. And I want to say, first and foremost, I do not agree with, you know, uh, just going up to someone and having this fight, of course, right? That's totally not it. And I get it. But we already knew that part. We already knew that part that CM Punk went after Jack Perry because Jack Perry was essentially running his mouth, right? Yeah. And truth be told, sometimes, and people are going to disagree on this, and I understand, sometimes people are going to run their mouth and you're going to want to get physical because it's human nature. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, that's a monster. And I get it. I get it. But there are fights occurring every single day in multiple places, bro. To me, how do I say this? I've seen big, bigger, more extreme fights at the freaking local Target, okay? Yeah, <laughs> and between two soccer moms. I've seen two soccer moms tear a Target up. This was like nothing. That's why I'm like, I, I don't know. Everyone here that went to like public school probably saw two girls throw down Way worse than what you saw here today between CM Punk and Jack Perry. I'm I talking saw two young girls fight, fight, fight. One of her girls got her weave whipped out, and the other girls was swinging her weave around the school in victory. I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And this is in high school, you guys. These are high school children that are doing this. That's what the game is like. This is California going up, maybe. People are probably like, where, where school did these people go to? Felt like regular life to me. And so with that being said, when I watched this, my thought was this was a high school fight. It was. Someone said some shit. Someone didn't like it. Someone handled it in a way that they felt was best for them to handle it. And that was it. That was that. Now, I'm looking at this and I went into this thinking that I was going to come out of it thinking that CM Punk was the worst person ever. And I did not come out thinking that. And part of the reason is like, I thought that that was going to happen because my mind was, okay, if AEW is airing this, they are uber confident, super confident that CM Punk is going to look really bad in this. So I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, they wouldn't air it if, it if it didn't mean he looked horrible in it. And then I just thought, that's it. 
The only thing that I can say here is, okay, CM Punk should not have attacked him. Okay, fine. But again, shit happens. People shit happens. get in fights all mm-hmm. the time, all around the world, even yeah. at work, bro. All the time. It yeah. happens. Sometimes I've people get in. Yeah, I've seen people get in fights at work too, and then they just kind of come back. It's just like, yo, this happens. Testosterone. There's crazy. It's pro wrestling, the biggest event of the year. There's people over here. Small Joe's getting warmed up. Hook's getting warmed up. There's a lot of stuff happening. So it's just like, uh, I just don't really get why. Now, what are the ramifications out of this, Denise? Some people are saying that this is bad for AEW to play this. Uh, uh, not the right move. Ratings ploy. What do you think are the ramifications out of playing this video? So. Ha- Going into watching this video, I was so excited. I was like, let's go. I love the chaos. I'm here for it, right? Like, if this is going to be something that is so freaking entertaining, that's going to shine some crazy light on whoever, right? I was ready for it. Coming out of it, coming out of AEW today, I can honestly say I don't think they should have played the clip. Now, I say that for their purpose. For me, oh, are you kidding me? I love to watch this stuff. I still like, you know, for for the entertainment standpoint of, you know, when you're driving, when you're driving down the street, I feel like the car crash is the most best scenario to explain this. You're driving down the street, you see a car crash, you're going to turn and you're going to be like, God damn, like, you know, that sucks. There's a car crash, but you're still going to look. And that was the situation today with the CM Punk. Like, Like, I'm still going to look. But do I want it to happen? Of course not. Why? Because, you know, you don't want bad stuff to happen. But with this being said, for specifically for AEW, I don't think they benefited from this at all. And part of me had hoped like, oh, maybe, I don't know, depending on the video, they'll benefit from this. I don't think they did. And seeing the discourse around it on social media, I feel really bad, Reg, because I'm an AEW fan. I support AEW. I will continue to support AEW off of this. But it's not a good look right now for the company in terms of nothing came out of this that made me say, oh, man, I'm so glad CM Punk's out the effing door. In fact, nothing, now I'm thinking, Denise. Well, maybe he snapped. Okay, he snapped. No, no, no. Not, I'm like, forget about CM Punk. I'm like, okay. nothing came out of this. Like the FT, like after FTR came and talked, you weren't, you were just like, you didn't care. Well, when FTR did come out, they made some good points. They kind of, I think, addressed the other side of this argument where they did address like, why are you guys rolling a clip from like eight months ago? So I did like that portion, and I like that they presented this from the other side. But like, did it make you want to see that though. match? Did it make you want to see that match more? No. 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 It didn't I make think you I'm, I'm, see about, the young I'm Buc- about at the same because I was already looking forward to the Young Bucks and FTR. I was already looking forward right. to it because I'm like, oh, I know it's going to be a good match, and that's what I was looking forward to. That's fair. But in that's terms fair. of the story, do am I more interested now? No, because I was already interested. So this did nothing for you, is what you're saying. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. Maybe, okay, fine. On a zero to a hundred, maybe like a 10%. Add an extra 10%. That's not bad. I th- Is that bad? No, 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 no. I mean, uh, you, I, I, I don't know. I, I felt like afterwards, who knows, man? What, what, what is, what is shouldn't have and should have played? Like, I feel like if they had played this video the dynamite immediately after all in it would hit different but again pro wrestling i liked it so chaos terrible listen are you happy or do you think it was a good idea for them to roll the tape good right I- now, I, i'm on a no i'm on a no i don't think it was a good idea to roll the tape following what we saw I'm on i I'm going to take bad publicity here is good publicity. So I'm with it. Like if this garnered <laughs> up somebody wanting to watch dynamite, a dynasty, if this garnered up, there were people tuned in that to the AEW. They're like, I never watched a show in my life. I'm not blah, blah, blah. When are they playing this? I want to see this that watched it. So, I mean, that worked. Who knows if it'll work in the long run? Who knows if anything is anything, but for today it did what it did. It was what it is. And you guys, like, I just don't have anything personal attached to any of this. So it's just like, I, it's all wrestling. The Young Bucks coming into the video, it's just silly work and, and, and acting heel, heel work. I'm like, it all feels on the line for me. But if you feel on the other side, like, I get it. So my next question. 
So the part there where you where we saw CM Punk, basically he said on the on the MMA hour that he had told Tony Khan that he was a clown and that he quit there. So from what you just said right now, like that was supposedly the moment in which Tony Khan feared for his life. Yeah. I find uh, even having seen the footage, I find it hard to believe that someone feared for their life during that. And I don't want to just be like, I don't want to be rude or a jerk, right? Because if someone fears for their life, who am I to say, no, you're wrong, right? Because if someone fears for their life, they fear for their life. Yeah. However, I, I nearly got my face licked on Hollywood Boulevard one time by some crazy maniac who cornered me against the wall, put his fist up against the wall and tried licking my face. And I feared for my life that day. Denise. <laughs> okay. Denise, Denise, so Denise, that's what I'm Denise. saying. It was more extreme. Denise, how much money do you have? What do you mean? On, on me right now? Like cash? Zero. In, in the history of your life? My whole life altogether? How much money have you ever had in your whole life? I don't know. Like not that much. I Oh, I know what you're saying here. I'm not in the same tax bracket. No. How much money has Tony Khan had bracket. in his life? A lot. He's a billionaire's kid. Right. His life is way different than ours is. I can't say, I can't be like, well, I did this even earlier when I was like, well, I've seen this. I, that's way different than what he's experienced. Like these are like, if he feared for us, he probably did. He's a billionaire's kid. I've never had, I'm a billionaire. No one's ever lunged at me. Well, like what, you know what I mean? So that's where you have to look at it. We can't yeah, look at it right. from, from our perspective because I got thirteen dollars in my bank right now. It's way <laughs> like we're on different specters right here. You know? Yes, it is true though, honestly, because and I think sometimes it's hard because it really is hard for me. It's really hard for me to see that video and say, "Oh, I agree that he feared for his life." It's very hard for me to say that because, again, I, I feel like I've just seen worse for other people have experienced worse. And it's just, I don't know. It's very hard to believe that he feared for his life there. But again, I feel bad saying that because I feel like you can't say that for somebody else. If they feared for their life, I'm going to believe them because it, I don't know what their thoughts are inside their head. I'm not inside their mind, but you're right. We sometimes forget that growing up as a billionaire is going to have a different outlook on life. Yeah, it's just dip like you, the experiences that he's had and the experience that we had were way different. So if he did, he might like, uh, dude, that's crazy that you're having the biggest wrestling show ever in history. You're at the table about to get into the first match with the guy and the guy comes in here with some crazy energy. He starts throwing hands or whatever you think happened. And then he's like, ah, you know, he doesn't like his brain is probably not even processing him saying you're a clown. This is blah, blah, blah. His brain is like, well, 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 this guy's trying to kill me. Like, so I'm not making excuses for anything. I don't know anything, but I'm thinking of it. If I was a billionaire, dude, if I was a billion, I got a hundred dollars right now. And I'll be like, yo, you all. But if I was a billionaire and some guy comes and he's trying to ruin the biggest show of my life, because that's all I'm thinking. I'm not thinking Baba. I'm thinking my I'm we're doing the biggest show of our lives, dude. This shit is going down right now. And you're up here fighting. What the fuck's going on? And then he comes at me. Yo, he was trying to kill me. I don't like that's we can't, you know, we can't right. put on with us to that. So that's it. Right. So yeah, no, I, I do think you make a fair point on that in regards to uh, you know, how different Tony Khan might have perceived CM Punk's actions versus how we perceived CM yeah. Punk's actions. Exactly. Now, so with that being said, so we talk about this different perception of whether or not he was justified to fear for his life, right? Yeah. Okay. This led to CM Punk being terminated from AEW. CM Punk, who for several years, we did not actually think was going to come back to pro wrestling, comes back right. to pro wrestling to this new company that didn't even exist when he was in WWE, when the whole drama with them happened. And so then, you know, he's back. We're like, oh, my God, hallelujah, a miracle. This is great. He said he was never going to come back to pro wrestling, yet here he is. So not only that, but you also have him come in, and he is a pretty damn big draw for AEW, okay? Right. You can argue maybe even their biggest. OK, numbers. So with that being said, based off what we saw here today, did that really justify just like everything like them terminating him? I know that CM Punk quit, but it's like, 
I don't know. It's kind of a mess. I mean, if you look at it in the perspective of let's forget all the stuff that I said about this being pro wrestling and we're just running a business and we're doing again, doing the biggest show of all time and a wrestler you lunges at me. I have no choice, Denise. I'm the boss and that fool lunges at me. It's a worse. It's a worse thing on the company if he lunged at me and then he stays and he could just let the, what does that show the rest of the company? This fool lunged at me and I let him stay. No, you lunged at me. You're gone. You lose. Oh, you quit. No, you lunged at me. You quit a meet the second you came at me, bro. Like, that's what you have to think about. Like, it is pro wrestling. It is all this. But Tony ain't in. He's not a wrestler. He's not in the locker room. He's not in this fight. And you went after him. And as a business and as a, you know, what this is, you got to let him go. That's what had to happen. Now, should the uh, ramifications and all this, he's over there. A lot of crazy stuff's happening. But he had to be gone. If you're lunging at me, no matter who you are, you're out of here, dude. That's just how life is, you know? Right, right. Because I look at this and I'm like, damn, it really sucks that, first of all, this happened and that CM Punk, who was doing such great business for AEW, that this played out the way that it did, right? Because obviously yeah. in a perfect world with rainbows and stars and all of that, we would have loved to see CM Punk stick around in AEW and actually have his AEW championship reign, actually help this company get to higher levels than, than it has before. You know, I, I wanted to see CM Punk stay with AEW and truly help the company get Definitely. to that next level. So it is unfortunate that, these things happened that led to this and led to the frustration and led to him quitting and led to this whole, you know, taunting see, Tony Khan fearing for his life. Because Reg, you and I were in those exact same press rooms. You and mm -hmm. I sat through at least five or six CM Punk media scrums in which you, my friend, made CM Punk cry. And yeah. he was so freaking happy with uh, with pro wrestling in general. He, Denise, he was idea. crying because of what Tony did. He's like, this guy did this for me that was the that was the reason for the tears <laughs> yes and i remember being um at the press conference remember when uh i forgot what eric bischoff had said about uh cm punk and mm. tony khan went on like a three minute rant defending yeah. cm punk mm -hmm. and so i look back and i think about how cm punk fell in love with the business again through AEW. i look back at the way that cm uh tony khan defended him i look back at just their overall engagement together and i'm like kind of bummed that it all went to the shits you know yeah i think denise because like like you said there was moments as wrestling fans where we're like this guy's never going to come back to wrestling like no matter for any promotion he's just like content blah 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 then you start hearing rumblings and then you're like wait he is actually going to come to AEW, and there was some feeling you know what i mean those feelings were restored there was big house that first dance show is insane like i watched that all the time that return like it changed stuff and like the energy around when he was around, I liked it. I thought it was really good energy for AEW. What eventually happened, I think was unfortunate, but I, like you said, I just kind of wished it all would have worked out. Cause I just liked uh, everything that was going on with it. And the backstage politics just became too much. And it's just really unfortunate. Yeah. I really wish that truth be told, I wish that it would never have gotten to this level. I wish that there would have been, I guess that more of that corporate structure yeah. to prevent stuff like this, to prevent, because if you're an employee, Reg, mm -hmm. in any job, if you're an employee and you have frustrations with another coworker, you want there to be someone or some group of people that can help facilitate and manage that. And when that doesn't happen, it does cause frustration. Mm -hmm. so you don't want to get to that but of course in pro wrestling and throughout this whole entire time like that's the thing though like all these companies have dramas there's dramas we don't even know about going on backstage in all promotions um, the we just issue denise the stuff the issue denise is is you have all these problems and it could just be a backstage thing and we could not talk about it but there's all these rumors there's dirt sheets there's blah 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 but the worst part of it all is they hand these guys that are disgruntled a live microphone. They're just like, here, go outside and talk. We want you to talk about this, but like in CM Punk situation, Hangman, but there's all these guys that can like, I'm out here with a mi live microphone. I could say whatever I want. I could throw a curveball into this whole situation. And there was a whole bunch of times where things like that happened that were kind of like, I felt like the office was in play. Office was trying to handle it, but it was like those extracurricular things. Like no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to handle those situations. And it's just so unfortunate. 
this tape played, Denise. That was the thing, though. Remember when they announced it on Saturday? People were like, it's probably going to be a skit. It's probably going to be a this. It's probably going to be this. But they really, really played it. And if anything, if it's bad or goodwill that comes out of this, them saying something and delivering on something, I think, is worth something. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of people thought this was going to be a bait and switch, and then they weren't actually going to show the tape. I didn't feel that way. I felt like they were going to show the tape from the very beginning because yeah. they don't they do not do that. Like, AW, no. say what you want about them, but when they say, oh, we're going to do something, they actually really do do it, all right? Whether or not it was the right thing to do, that's up to everybody, and everybody here is going to have a different opinion on this. Damn, Reg, you and I, we have sort of different opinions do, on this. Denise. I was going to say, you're like, cool, roll the tape. And I'm here like, damn, maybe they shouldn't have rolled the tape. No, I, I respected everything, though, because, like, it, it, there's so many angles to this, Denise. There's so much business around it. Like, again, he's gone. He's over there. He's making money for them. And well, uh, uh, immediately after when the Young Bucks and the and FTR are doing the thing, the crowd's chanting for CM Punk, Denise. Yes, there were CM Punk chants. So it's like, I don't oh. So, <laughs> look, point blank, though, I do want to say this right now. It's very hard when you're looking at this because there are going to be people that you like in this and there are going to be people you don't like. You may be sitting here. You may be a bigger Bucks fan. You may be a better, a bigger CM Punk fan. You may be an AW fan, not a WWE fan or a WWE fan or vice versa. And those, those opinions are going, those, those feelings are going to impact your opinion on that. Right. And also the way that you as a human approach things is going to impact how you feel about this. So everything is just, it's a very controversial uh, mm. topic, but I want to get into these super chats and we still need to get into the Will Ospreay stuff. So bear with us, guys. Here we Denise, go. I had, look, I was in deep, you know, as soon as the promo happened, like I was deep in this and I was like reading my phone, blah, blah, blah. And then everybody's like, this Will Ospreay thing, this Will Ospreay thing. I like had initially, I had to go back and watch it because I was like, what are y'all talking about? We're about to get into it. But that was also a like, yo, we're cooking with fire tonight. Oh, man. All right, let's get into these super chats and then we'll talk about the Will Ospreay stuff. So this is from Ben Wah who says, I didn't see any justification to attack. CM Punk fans are not responsible for any of this. As wrestling fans, let's move on and turn this ugly incident into great stories in the ring. Denise and Reg help us. My God, my friend, there is absolutely nothing Reg and I can do. Not um, at all. Andrew Cool says that footage helps fuel Drew McIntyre and CM Punk feud. I don't know if Drew McIntyre has put anything out yet on social media because social media has been a shit show right now. Um, but I do hope that Drew McIntyre kind of comments on this because he's been doing so great with towing the line between uh, you know, incorporating some real life situations into this uh, on-screen feud. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a, <laughs> I saw that a lot coming into this, Denise, of people being like, oh, this is just going to give Drew McIntyre. If you, do, you, do you feel yes. like that way? You feel like this is going to help what's going on over more importantly, you know how I don't Drew think, McIntyre come up with some good material. We didn't really get into it, but does this make Punk a bigger hero over there to those fans? To the WWE side, yes. Yeah. You yes. Think so? Based on the comments that I've been seeing on social media, there are so many where it's like, oh, CM Punk was right. CM Punk was right. CM Punk's proven right. CM Punk's proven right. Ariel Hawani, I don't know if you saw this, posted a uh, clip side by side of, um, CM Punk's comments on the podcast mm -hmm. and then the actual footage. And for the most part, there's, there's a lot of it that pretty, it's, there's a lot that does align with what he said. And then if you want to get like even deeper than that, of course, there's some parts that don't necessarily align, Of course, but it's sort of a recounting though. It's not like he's mapping everything out verbatim, you know? Yeah. Cause the, the, his story has changed a couple of times as people need to be aware of that. He's told a couple of different stories of like, he was trying to get to the match and Jack came through as like, ah, get out of the way. I'll do it again, motherfucker. And like, yes, it, you're right. It, it, and this story is like, he walked straight up to Jack Perry and was like, what's up with you, Jack Perry? So the story, as we saw in the video, is kind of he instigated it. This one kind of goes along the same, the more of so what he said on Ariel's show, because it was he had said, if you remember that Tony Schiavone went up to him. And that Tony Schiavone was like, oh, you need to go out there because Jack Perry is, oh, that was the collision one, wasn't it? Which was the one where he was like, oh, Jack Perry's out there yelling at Mike Mansuri and he's yelling at all these people. And so CM Punk's like, okay, well, if I'm going to go handle it, you're not going to like the way that I'm handling it. And so that was and the whole way, thing. The way that he's telling the story is because on the MMA hour, he's like, 
I walked up and I had some people with me because blah, 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 you know what time it is. And it's like, so one, you thought it might go down or you went with the intention of it could, could go down and I have to have backup. But then two, he goes, I, we started facing off and then Jack Perry starts talking shit to me. And I'm like, you know, I could kick your ass. Well, then why did you bring backup, fool? <laughs> if you can beat his ass, you said, I'm, bu- I'm about to pull up on this fool. I got backup because you know what time it is. And then three minutes later, I'll beat your ass. Now, of course, we couldn't hear the actual audio in this video, but just from like watching, you can tell that Jack Perry was like, you know, saying some stuff. And when Jack you got- Perry is like fixing <laughs> his hair. He's like, he was fixing his hair. You're like, right. He is not bothered. He's just like, <laughs> he seemed very like a, like a young, like a young, like a young, like a young punk, essentially. He looks like he's Jack, like Jack Perry is being Jack Perry. He's back there just like, dude, I don't care about this. So if you, it felt like Jack Perry was like, I don't care. If you want to do something about it, pull up and CM Punk pulled up. That's but it did it look on. like he did taunt him, though, because there was one point, if you notice, where I, Jack Perry said something and CM Punk turns like, it's almost like he's saying to an imaginary right. camera, you're fucking seeing this right, guy? See like, this like, guy. <laughs> yes, that's literally the reaction CM Punk had. And that was the moment where I think he real then uh, like 10 seconds later or however later, that's when you see the first uh, blow or whatever, you know? It's just the video. There's so there's a lot. How many times have you watched the video, Denise? There's I'm sure you've missed some things. Four. I, okay, like, so the first time that I watched the video, I missed the choke. I actually couldn't yeah. see the choke because there was all of these, you know, people and everything. And I'm like, wait a minute, where's the choke? And then I watched it again the second time and I'm like, oh, there it is. Duh. Mm-hmm. And then the third time, I, the third time I was looking to see who was around. The mm-hmm. fourth time I noticed the Jack Perry hair. <laughs> so every time I watch it, I, I love Denise going like a, a CSI agent. She's like, and this time I'm going to focus on this part. And this time I'm going to focus on this part. <laughs> yes. No, honestly, n- I I want to go back and watch it and I'm going to watch every single person's <laughs> roll through the whole video. I'm going to do that when I have time. All right, here we go. Sheldon Jackson, thank you so much for gifting five DWO memberships. We got Steven here who says this mess falls on leadership. Tony Khan, sadly, we got crazy 101 who says, I hate to say it, but AW took an L here. Fudge, I hate to say that too, but damn, it is what it is. Van Housen says punk shoved first, which we already pretty much knew. knew that. Yeah, I think. There's a lot of people saying that they're like, oh, Punk did was the instigator. I think like, we kind of knew that. Kinda told the story that. Yeah, he's told that story since the beginning of like uh, Jack Perry was talking shit to me. So I did something about it. We got delayed grads here with a generous super chat who says matching Benoit's earlier super chat saying ditto on his sentiment. CM Punk fans stopped defending Punk's behavior. It was plain to see. It's part of a kayfabe story now between the Young Bucks and FTR. Denise and Reg help heal the tribes. Mm-hmm. You swear. You swear we have that kind of power. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Denise, like, are they saying something I don't know? Do you got some extra powers? Because I can't do nothing over here. Nah, bro. They're like 5 o'clock WB show. 5.05 AW show. 5.10 WB show. 5.15 AW show. I don't even know who I'm shilling anymore. <laughs> Someone, someone, throw me a bone here. I, you know, you know what I want one day for someone to surprise me Dude. and put TNA Impact shell, NWA shell. Come and spice up the timeline for me, please. That is so funny, Denise. You, you swear NWA shell, please. <laughs> there if is somebody a- calls you an NWA shell, Denise, I'm out here. We're not friends anymore. I'm off the pod. We're, we're done. You're going to see videos of me throwing down, bro. Uh, Straight up. (laughs) Okay. Travis Lindsay says, I'm over the drama. Let's focus on the wrestling. Yeah. 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 I I agree, but I also like the drama. And I ain't going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here, Reg, and act like I'm freaking Mother Teresa. Right, 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 right. Being like, oh, I'm a holy saint and I only want peace and love. Bro, we're humans and we tend to go in. We tend to be you know, looking at that stuff. Eh, right. Like drama. don't, go, don't go through my for you page. There's definitely not street fights on there at all. Don't look at them. They're like, you know what I mean? Like I don't spend my time looking at street fights online. Who would do that? So it's like, where's the line? Aaron Garcia says, Tony Schiavone looked upset after the footage. Um, They all kind of looked like they didn't know what to do. Tony doesn't want to be a part of this. That's not really his vibe. He's like, oh, but he's shit. already a part of this. CM Punk mentioned him. Well, yeah, but like, even he's just a straight, he's like, he had to be a part of it. It's not that he was like, I'm about to get involved too. It's like, that's his job. We got Roberto here who says AEW is by far my favorite wrestling company. But with that said, AEW is getting attacked big time on Twitter tonight. They took an L tonight. Oh, and Mina rules. Yeah. And it's, it's gonna, it's gonna suck. Honestly, it's right now. If you are look, 
if you are an extreme tribalist and let's say you're really, really pro AW, it's going to suck right now on social media for you. Now, let's say you are a fan of both. You're, you're, you're it, It's like one of your faves is going to take an out today and you just kind of have to roll with it. Yeah, it's I don't I, I don't think it was an L, but I guess we'll see in the long run. Well, we will. Infamous Raider yeah. Loco says Adam Copeland's speech last week was cringe, then Buck's video cringe, and then FTR cringe, and Will Ospreay uh, job a bit cringe. Definitely hard dynamite to watch. Oh, we'll talk about Will Ospreay in a second. Joseph said, does this audi- does this advance intrigue in the FTR versus Bucks, though? I'm here for the pettiness. Give it all to me. Loved Will Ospreay firing back at Triple H, too. That's from Joseph. And we kind of covered this already on whether or not it helped the storyline. Um, Reg, did you... Feel that it did help the story link or did you not? Yeah, no, I actually did feel like it needed that that part was I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. If the sending out FTR immediately after to react and be like, blah, 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 I think helped a lot because this match, this tournament coming into it, everybody was like, predictability is gonna be the young bucks versus FTR in, into it. So they needed some extra draw. And I think good or bad, I think this was an extra draw for it. Papa Bengals here says, wow, sex, blood, and violence. TK stepping up their game. Great to see the Kelly connection. Thank you so much. We got Manzo96 who says, AEW is absolutely on fire right now. Love to see it. Alexander Fitzgerald says, CM Punk saying I didn't punch anyone when he did. CM Punk also saying I turned to TK. No, you lunged at him. It clears the air and helps with Perry return. But this footage could have been quietly released. How do you quietly release this footage? Twitter? <laughs> That way, only the hardcore IWC world is in on it. Yeah, how do you feel about that, that. Denise? What if they had, uh, they said, all right, uh, forget it. We're going to release this footage on Wednesday morning to Twitter. Do you, how would your feelings have been? I think it wouldn't have been seen by a lot of people as a desperations thing because that's the big thing that a lot of people are saying, oh, this was a desperations tactic for them to get bigger ratings, right? If you put it on Twitter, just directly on Twitter and not on the show, then people can't say that it was for the ratings. Why? Because they didn't put it on the show. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. We got Swayze here who says Tony Khan absolutely buried Jack Perry. Why would you sew the footage of Jack Perry looking like a scary, scared little boy? AEW will not be around in 2026. So I do not agree with that second statement. I do believe that AEW will be around for a long time. Um, And in regards to the Jack Perry thing, I kind of already felt heading into this that this was not going to look Jack. It was, it was not going to make Jack Perry look good at all. There's a reason why they're calling him this. Why well, he's calling himself the scapegoat. Remember the analogy that I made earlier, Denise, and I asked you how much money you have? Yes. Jack Perry's dad, Luke Perry, like 90210, off birth. Jack Perry is when he when he came out of his, his mom's one, it was like na 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 all that he's known is the highest life in the world. He's been in Hollywood his entire life. All he's ever known is being one of the biggest heartthrob actors of all time, son. Life is way different for him. We, I don't expect Jack Perry to be throwing, fighting with CM Punk out here. This is the one of the biggest act- actors of all time, kid, you guys. What do you want from Jack Perry? Y'all Let's thought he was about that. to be back there throwing hands? and No, it's Jack Perry. And honestly, I think that this enhances his little gimmick because he, like I said, was playing with his hair, not giving a shit. And they're going to, that, that is exactly what I've always thought of Jack Perry. Fucking Hollywood's kid who doesn't care. But when it's time to fucking go, it's time to go. And again, you don't have to really know how to fight to fucking do this because CM Punk really doesn't know how to fight and everybody loves him. So imagine one second you're out here twirling your little curls and the next you're being choked. <laughs> exactly. I mean, oh, wait. I mean, I, that can happen. I mean, I, there's been a couple of nights where. <laughs> okay. Careful with that. <laughs> Twirl your hair. Get choked tonight. Woo. All right. This is going off the rails. But now I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, ooh, ooh, I, okay. That, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Okay. So when you had said Jack Perry and you kind of point, painted a little picture of his life and how he grew up. With that being said, though, I do see how a, somebody that lived a life like that would grow up with a little bit more of this cocky attitude, maybe not being as humble or maybe not being as, you know, lovable and can kind of probably get under people's skin, thus getting under CM Punk's skin. I can Jack see Perry. it. Jack Perry came in. It's like something that uh, I've heard rumors and ramblings that Jack Perry is a Hollywood kid. He acts like a Hollywood kid. Oh, why wouldn't he, dude? He's been this for his entire life. I've said from the beginning, 
make Jack Perry into that character. Every time I was like, Jungle Boy's cool, but when they say when they turn Jack Perry into who people actually think he is, that's when it's really gonna go up. People have been saying, Oh, Jack Perry looks like blah blah blah. It's fine. He doesn't would it what did, was he going to have coming out of this? Oh, he beat up Sam. No, no, no. This, I think, actually is going to work more for him. But that's just me. See, and I feel opposite. I don't think it's going to work for him. Why not? Because I looked at this and there was nothing that Jack Perry did that made me want to root for him. The, the, and that's where the problem stands. Dude, see a punk standing in front of you, Denise, and you don't give a shit. That's badass. See a punk is right there that way. Flapping, see a punk right here. Blah blah blah, flapping his gun. Jack Perry's like that way. Dude, my hair needs to be fixed. I don't <laughs> care. Or if you want to no. fight, do something about it, pussy. And then see a punk did something about it. Yeah, that's but then he, but hilarious. he didn't do. But he didn't do anything. Like there was no moment where he actually was successful at fighting back this he is a was, wrestling company i want to see guys that I, i'm sorry like this didn't do anything for me it on doesn't that need to fight this point i talk shit to you i'm not trying to fight you you're trying to fight me what do you want from me bro well, uh, well, uh, and what does cm punk do cm punk pushed him and put him in a fucking rear naked choke bro like a front front, front face headlock like goldberg and fucking jericho he's the one that's not fighting what do you want me to do start throwing punches we're not even throwing punches it seemed like both guys almost didn't want to fight Right, like okay, Jack Perry didn't fight. Neither did CM Punk. This was a high school fight. I said this it from the beginning. Like when you're fighting your brother and you're like, I'm gonna really beat him up, and then you get together and you guys start hugging. Like, so yes. what I'm saying is, of all of the shit that has gone down in pro wrestling history, all of the stories that we have heard of this person stabs that person, this person freaking this happened, this happened, all of these things, right? We finally, for the first time ever, get to actually see it. And it wasn't even that big. You know how disappointing that is? Bro, I wanted to see fucking heads coming off. Like, no, I mean, I don't mean that literally, but you know. Relax. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be like, oh boy, like this is a good fight. Like, let me get into it. Instead, I was like, okay. That was my reaction. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go back to what I said earlier. This, like, to me, this fight did not justify all of everything that happened afterwards that's uh, okay i'll land at that same place with you maybe not beyond just what happened tonight everything i'm like this all was happening because of this you guys that's exactly how i started the show like this is pro wrestling shut up they should have had wrestlers court drank some beers and everybody would have forgot about it but it's much deeper than rap here so we got Jared here who says, not the finger poke of doom, but a deeply embarrassing moment for AEW tonight. Made Luke Perry's son look weak. Made TK look like a petty child. Big L. Grapple Geekery says, well, I doubt the footage changed too many minds. I've seen a few people who are saying they have, but not many. People who are pro, whichever side, are seeing what they want to see. Yes. There's right. there's actual shows about this, and I have, hopefully someone here in the chat remembers, but there's a show um, where – like basically they do like scientific studies mm -hmm. where they interview, like they, they put out a scene, right? Like they act out a scene and then they interview the people and they ask the people like, tell us what you saw. And you listen to the people's recounting of things. And it's like so different. And it's really is like your perception on how you see things. Uh, I forgot what the show is called, but it's yeah, somewhere out let us there. Know in, let us know in the chat. That sounds really, really interesting. I'm yeah, really I don't I don't remember what the show is called. I'll, I'll hopefully I remember it at some point. Mm -hmm. But Bobby Fon Fonseca says, this BS is actively making me dislike this company. And see, that's what you don't want. Oh, yeah. my God. I feel so bad. I don't want people to stop liking AEW. I really enjoy AEW. They're about to give us Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying here, Denise. I guess I didn't really think about. There's some fans that are just turned off about all of this. Like, I'm like pro wrestling. I love it, but there's some wrestling fans that aren't like me at all, and they're just like, get to the wrestling, dude. Why are we seeing this? I just came to this show to watch you guys have great wrestling, and you guys are involved in some drama with some guy that's not even here. So I could understand how some people are on that side. You know, it's unfortunate. Hey. 
Ken Shiro says, I think people are going overboard by calling a WCW 2000. However, I think both companies have been petty towards each other in the last week. Agreed. Yeah. Rise and shine. It's butt whipping time says CM stand for crazy maniac punk. Sven Big says it was weird showing the vid, but I don't think they were trying to discredit Punk. Just showing, I guess, that it was a selfish act and that it used a weird angle. Just felt right. weird. Also, crowd was dead. I think the crowd was just like paying attention, to be honest. Yeah, this is a really good point that's being made here. It's because a lot of stuff we're talking about, like some people were like, oh, Jack started this. Oh, Punk started this. Why did they blah, blah, blah. I think that's the most important thing. It's just a selfish act, man. Like I said, this is our biggest show of all time, dude. We're about to kick off. We're about to go live on the air. We don't have time for this, dude. I don't have time to be dealing with this. I don't have the time to be dealing with the ramifications that are coming off this. You were dealing, beeping with Jack Perry. Dude, you want me to go right now when the show's starting to talk to Jack Perry? No, dude, we'll deal with it later, which is what you should have done. Why don't you wait until your match was done and started getting to this? You don't have to get into it right into this. I know there's a lot of backstory. He's been there was stuff before, but right now, dude, this is all in our biggest show. Leave me alone. I'm just trying to do the show. So Chris Azul says TK was behind the monitors. That's who Punk lunged at when the fight was broken up. How did everyone miss this? That's why TK feared for his life. Swayze here says CM Punk Instagram story. He's laughing a la Mefeo. Oh, my God. Oh, it's yeah. Keith B says, as someone who follows WWE more than anything, I wondered what AEW would do tonight to try to gain potential new fans like me. What do you think tonight's show provided for that audience? <laughs> if you tuned in beforehand, I think Penta Adam Copeland was good. If you tuned in afterwards, we'll talk about Will Ospreay in a second, but... Did you think? Do you think the show did anything for fans that were maybe willing to give AEW a chance? There isn't everybody coming into this night that was gonna feel the way that they were gonna feel felt that same way. No one was gonna be convert. Nobody that was like Jack Perry was wrong is converted. Nobody that was like CM Punk was wrong is converted everybody's either vindicated or on some other shit. Ne I never for one minute was like, they're going to show this video and then all those WWE fans that are tuning into this are going to continue to watch this show. No, because this isn't the show for them. I think that's probably the biggest issue. That's probably where I land from it. AEW is the best fucking wrestling in uh, in America, and that's what they're going to lean on. That's their crutch. That's where the at the end of the day, it's going to go back to that. And the fans, you think you're going to convert? They don't care about that. We, they prove that they don't care about wrestling. So we have to really, at the end of this, if we're trying to convert new fans, those aren't the fans that need to be converted. I think you made a good point there. Julian Bravo says AJ Styles' Twitch streams were awesome. Farron with Equis says CM Punk gets fired for being unprofessional. If people want to believe that isn't that way, feel free to do it. He attacked a coworker. That's it. Out. Fired. Done. Mike T90K says Punk tried to shove his fingers down Tony's throat and gag him, but you couldn't see it because of the wall in the way. Jesus Christ, you guys. <laughs> Darian Pittman says, damn, Tony Schiavone had that WCW 2000 look on his face. Shout out to both of you guys. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. Wrestling is art here. DWO member says Cedric had a great tweet. I have not seen that. Uh, I'll look for that in us. Did you see that? What did he say? It's, he just posted a video. Oh, okay. I'll it's look afterwards. Good. Mm -hmm. Blacka says, a Blacka says, uh, billionaires must have a different softy standard. If Tony feared for his life after that, I pray he never walks the street in any major city. He don't without security. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think Tony Khan's gonna be out there walking Hollywood Boulevard getting his getting I'm just like was it was anybody like was anybody coming into this like Tony Khan's a tough ass dude that can beat ass? No, he's a bit like I got five security guards. I don't have to fight anybody. I'll get that guy off. I mean, so I'm talking crazy. Sorry. These are jokes. <laughs> They're jokes. Alexander Fitzgerald says when wrestling blurs the line with reality, I love it. This feels like the best way to bring back Jack. And they didn't put the focus entirely on punk. It feels like the focus is entirely on CM Punk. That's who we've been talking about. If someone goes back and rewinds this video, how many times have you and I said CM Punk's name? A shit ton. And Denise, he's on the other show. That's what I guess that's probably the worst part. Is like the payoff to this is not a match with Jack Perry and CM Punk, you know? All right, so I'm going to put a pin on this really quickly, and we're going to return to that. But I do want to get into another big topic here, and then I'll get Ooh. to the rest of the chats. Jeez. And that Ooh. is Will Ospreay throwing shots 
at Triple H for the shots that were thrown at him. Now, there's going to be people saying like, oh, Triple H wasn't talking about him. Bro, he was totally talking about him, all right? Read between the lines. He may have been talking about, he may have been talking about multiple people, but that definitely included Will Ospreay. Now, people here who know Will Ospreay know that this guy is a mother effing hustler. He's got like, how many freaking five-star matches he's got and traveled all over the world wrestling the very finest. There's a reason why he is where he's at. There's a reason why he's getting the paycheck that he's getting because he has hustled and he has worked. However, uh, during this WrestleMania week, there was a lot of shots that were fired at AW, at AW Talent. And one of them was Triple H basically saying, um, let, me, let me read the direct tweet, okay? The direct, me- the direct quote here because I don't want to mess things up. Triple H said, If they are not here to be all in on this, when I see people coming out of trying to make it and then they pick a job, well, they work less, the schedule is lighter, then I'm like, I'm glad I didn't pick you. If you're not in it for the grind at that point early in your career, you have no business being here. I don't know if I've ever heard the full quote until you said it right now. And I am blown away. What? Okay, if you're Will Ospreay, would you not be pissed about that? Oh my God, hand me a mic, Tony. I'm about to let it happen on this guy. That's insane. <laughs> right? Like I heard like a little piece of that, and I was like, oh, this guy is about to tattoo or something. And I was like, oh, that's funny, blah blah blah. But yeah, that, that is was like punk quote. Yeah, that was that different. is like I'm talking shit. And like, bro, this is Will Ospreay. It's funny because that the the Dave quote had just came out about his match with with Hobbs, where Dave was like. Osprey is too hard. He's doing these matches too crazy. He doesn't need to be taking these giant bumps. And it's like every one of uh, Osprey's matches, like five of your bullshit matches over there, Triple H. One is five. But Denise, I before Osprey let him have it on there, I also let this man have it. You were at these shows. This guy started the show on the weekend, ended the show. And then he started the show again on on Raw. What are you doing? Why are you out here? Why are we seeing your face so much? This ain't about you, big dog. But the big dog made it about him. So full circle. I'm glad that Will Ospreay was like, why is this guy talking? What are you talking about? I don't run from nothing. I am this business. Beautiful. I loved it. It was perfect. So I'm a Triple H fan. You can literally, I've just, literally, you can see the mask right behind me. Okay. I'm a Triple H fan, but Chill. God damn it, do I love Will Ospreay. See, there, there you go. Good I show. love Will Ospreay, all right? <laughs> I think that it was, I when I saw this quote from Triple H, I thought it was, I didn't agree with his quote. I did not agree with his quote. I did not agree with his statement. I do believe that people should go places where they can have a great life, not just a really good work life balance but also get paid handsomely. And I think that Will Ospreay has definitely done everything in his power to get himself to this level. Not everybody is making Okada money, Will Ospreay money in AEW, okay? That's not everybody's making that kind of money. I think Will Ospreay and Okada made great decisions with going with AEW, working that lighter schedule and getting paid. That does not by any means mean that they're not willing to work for it? What? Man, that's disgusting. And I'm going to show you Will Ospreay's worth right here, Denise. Everybody coming into this show and while the show was happening was talking about this video, this fight, this blah, blah, blah. Will Ospreay came out and made a headline on a show that was marred by something crazy. The top star, one of your top stars in this company, came and made a headline. That's how great this guy is. I'm so happy that Will Ospreay is on American television every week. The guy's great. So this is what he said to Triple H, by the way. He addressed the rumor that he's afraid of the grind, and he said he doesn't really know where this came from. And then he says that, you know, he kind of runs down his schedule about going to the UK, going to America, wrestling, wrestling every single week, eight to 10 hour flights. And he says, quote, normally I wouldn't rise to this type of bait, but seeing as the guy that said it is the (laughs) it's only in the position he's in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. You are in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. 
Let this be a painful jab back and a gentle reminder that you do not throw stones at an assassin with a machine gun. And I should add that he also motioned the grinding. And Reg, I had a bigger reaction to this than I did to the CM Punk fight. The CM Punk fight, I was like, okay, this dead, dead. I, I, I lost it. I lost it. I can't the, even say it. I lost it. The grind. Every time I hear the grind, I just think of Sable. If any if wrestling fans of like when Sable started going on her women's championship run and then she would say in all of her promos, are you ready for the grind? And she would do this grind. Shout out to Sable, uh, 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 one of the uh, wrestling pro wrestling legend. But every time I hear that, I think of that. This promo again was great, Denise. I love that he came with the heat. And yes, that's I keep get, jumping on and off of the fence of like how I feel about this. You got it. AEW, you don't need these ploys. You don't need any kind of tricks. You don't need anything. Will Ospreay is here. Okada's here. Brian Danielson is here. Mercedes is here. We don't need tricks. I don't need to be talking about the other guy. Why are we talking about another guy? Will Ospreay's here. I don't need to be talking about CM Punk. Okada's here. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm like, ah, you guys, I don't, know. I don't know. I I don't know what to say. I, uh, I thought that I thought that Will Ospreay was right in having a thing to say about what Triple H said, okay? And he went right below the belt because you know that this is something that you see on you see it on Twitter all the time. People saying Triple H is only there because he married the boss's daughter. This has been this has even been mentioned on WWE TV in past uh, feuds of Triple H. Like this is not anything new, but it does hit below the belt. Why? Because Triple H has done the work to you know, he made NXT what it was. He's out there now doing great stuff as the head of creative, as we just saw at WrestleMania 40. So he's out there doing all of the work, right? Yet people still want to attack. When they attack him, they go to, oh, well, you just married the boss's daughter and that's why you're there. And that's always, I think, if it were me, gonna hurt. It's going to hit every single time, Denise. It'll never happen when he's at the, because right now after Mania, he's out celebrating. He's like, I did this. You guys, we saw it. He said it a bunch of times. Reaction videos with his wife. Hug okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He thinks he's that guy. So he's going to continuously, the easiest way to knock that guy down from his pedestal to be like, well, you're only doing it because of your wife. And it's always going to hit because it's always going to get under his skin. Because it's like, it takes away your, your, you know, as a man, you don't want to say, oh, I just got here because of the woman I married. No one wants that. That's like so insulting, right? So it's gonna hit and it's gonna work. And the shot that he threw just had me like jaw down. And my favorite part in all of this was how proud Will Ospreay was of it. <laughs> did you see that smirk on his face? He was like, yes, and he, he said it himself. <laughs> He's a cheeky bugger. And he was like, I freaking, I might screenshot. I screenshot at that shit. I might frame it up. <laughs> yeah, no, Denise. I knew as soon as he started doing the promo, and then he was like, he started getting into it, and the crowd was into it. He was like, "Oh, I'm really about to give it to y'all." And then he really gave it up, man. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah so it was a lot here. Uh, I can't even believe I'm sitting here talking about Will Ospreay throwing a shot at Triple H. Like, and I on saw someone on Twitter on AEW television. I saw someone on Twitter say like, "Oh, he's going to be burning bridges, this and that." Bro, Cody Rhodes destroyed the throne. This man just, this, this man was just gifted a watch from Triple H. He destroyed the throne. Denise, you said it. I like, I don't, I, there's nothing else to say out of that. There you go. He's the world champion. This guy, they, they shook hands and hugged in the ring in the middle of WrestleMania, Denise. Like, nothing Still trips me out. Yeah, it was wild. But like, nothing's off limits at this point. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, we got to get into the rest of these super chats. Here we go. This is from Rafael Garcia, who says, man, that new episode of X-Men 97 was a doozy. Who cares about three middle-aged men telling half-truths? And now the ratings are going to drop again. Gambit. Mm. <laughs> Mike Park, by the way, I don't know anything about X-Men 1997, so I feel yeah. really bad that I couldn't add to that, Raphael. But yeah. Mike Parker says, showing that footage made CM Punk look strong and AEW looks like amateurs. They did nothing to help themselves. Tony needs to worry about his company and not get into a back and forth he won't win. I don't know that it made him look strong, though. I can't agree with that statement. I don't think it made him look strong. I don't, I don't think, it, I don't think it, I think it feels neutral to me. Like, he wasn't stronger. He doesn't weaker. It's just like, oh, it's just CM Punk. 
Mike T90K says Punk wouldn't do it to anyone that is bigger than him. He only fights with guys that are smaller than him. He's 40 years old. Time to grow up. VV Edit says CM Punk said that Jack said, what are you going to do about it? So CM Punk did something about it. I don't see the problem. Seems like a normal scrap. Exactly. Someone talk shit. You're going to throw down. I was going to say, then they get hit, but they didn't really get hit. Do you know how many times, you know how many times, Reg, have you ever, have, and let's just, I pose this question to everybody here in the chat. Everybody here at some point has got it into an argument on social mm -hmm. media or had people talking shit. Oh my God. Don't. When you see this person, people, yeah, you know how many times I'm like, you know what, mother effer, you want to freaking tell that to my <laughs> face? Let's effing go right now, bro. <laughs> These people are, I don't, they, they would never. They're just all internet talk. I exactly. see people in person. I'm just like, ha -ha. that's what I'm saying, though. There's two yeah. types of people people that just keyboard, what's the word, keyboard warriors or whatever mm -hmm. they call them. And then there's going to be people that's, that are going to take it like CM Punk and be like, oh, you have shit to say to me. Well, guess what? I'm gonna you react. Gonna stand, Punk stood on business. It wasn't good for business, but he stood on business. Right. Christopher, wasn't good for anybody's business. <laughs> Christopher Marino says Reg with the best take on this whole thing. Broadway Joe says Twitter is getting their shit off right now. They got people in TNA clowning them. Tony, mm -hmm. why did you do this? People in TNA clowning? Stones, glass house. Oh, God. Easy Breezy says, I literally saw two Waffle House employees Jesus. fight each other worse last week, and they cooked our breakfast after. <laughs> <laughs> See? You get a scrap on, and then you go outside, have a cigarette, come back and cook. <laughs> Swayze says, please let MJF go to the real promotion, the E. That now is, the real issue is, is uh, Chicago made Punk himself a straight edge. And I, I don't think Jack partakes either. These guys need to smoke some weed so if CM Punk just smoked a blunt like his whole life, which and like everything would go it'd be like a big butterfly effect and everything would be back to normal if he just smoked one blunt. So what you're saying is the problem is that CM Punk is straight edge. Listen, there's a lesson for you, kids. Do drugs. <laughs> Cancel this show. That's it. We're off the air. We've been canceled. This was the finger poke of doom of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> do not <laughs> Reg, what are you doing? sorry 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 erase that or get our producer to erase that Denise. <laughs> we don't have a producer get Denise I'm to erase this, this. <laughs> I'm running this goddamn ship <laughs> Juan Ortega says the Venus is here Mina saved Mariah great debut yes believe it or not other things happen on the show I don't even know if we're gonna get to them Ooh. the champ 39 says Tony Khan has a big freaking ego he can't stand that WWE is doing extremely well he went to do the petty nonsense stuff that guy has no shame RX Merrill says no offense to him but TK is scrawny billionaire trans fun tr trust fund baby it totally tracks that he was scared for his life we got Potokia here who says they should have just showed the footage and talked about their side of it on a podcast, not on Dynamite. TJ Smooth says, after seeing, I don't believe CM Punk was fired for the fight. He called Tony a clown and bruised Tony's fragile ego, in my opinion. Bad idea to air it at all. We got Papa Bangles here who says, I guess I missed it. I thought it was a big nothing, but I also didn't think this was a TK clip. Not a good look. Right? That's what I was thinking, too. I was like, there's got to be more. <laughs> Farron Wolf says EVP's characters take what social media, medial meme of them, and blend the reality to wrestling. It's, it's memeing the real drama behind the Young Bucks. Yeah, they're supposed to be what people think that they are. That they're right. being what the internet thinks they are. That's exactly. the character of the EVPs. Essentially, they're turning all their bits into real life things. It's essentially what being the elite was, Denise. Like, they're just making that extra. Night American says they WCW the hell out of the situation, even if it's for storyline that's kind of a stretch. What did FTR have to do with anything in that video? Well, the, the way that they connected it was that FTR, as we all know, are best buds with CM Punk. So I did get why they... I get how they were able to finesse all of this and make it somewhat like work into the actual storyline. The way that Nick did the bit of like, maybe they are the ones behind this whole thing. I think it's supposed to tie it together. Some, you know, rise and shine. It's butt whooping time says I'm a ventriloquist and I fight with my puppets all the time. Damn. My job is stressful. Corey MacArthur says, I was expecting more of tonight's footage and it didn't accomplish anything. CM Punk lives rent free in the minds of AEW. Everything punk said was aired hello denise and reg and dwo crew dwo crew 
Oh man, thank you so much, Corey, for the very generous super chat. We got it's BB here who says, does the fear for lifeline show Tony's privilege? That's why his normal audience won't understand. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It, that one's going to be a tough one to get by because even I myself could not buy that. Like I felt like there had to be more. Right. But again, we don't know, you guys. We're, it, it, it's a privilege. It's a way different privilege than any of us know. So for once, it's kind of cool to be poor is what you're saying? Because then, you know, we like, you know. Well, I, no. I wouldn't say all that, Denise. No? All right. Well, I'm just saying, at least I, I'm, I'm poor, but I got a little edge. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Is that what you'll take out of this? Like, that's I'm the home. bright side in all of this, bro. I'm like, I can't go on vacation, but I can fight. It's like, now nah, I'll Wait take the vacation. Look, 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 look. I can't go on vacation. I can't fly on a private jet. I don't have fancy clothes. I can't go to a freaking buffet. But damn it, if someone looks at me on the street, I'm going to go, what, bitch? <laughs> I don't know why I can't go to a buffet. It's really bad. That's luxury for Denise. She's like, forget I'm talking the jets, the fancy ones. Forget the news. Forget forget the the new shoes. Forget the clothes. She's like, I can't go to a buffet, you guys. <laughs> those fancy ones. You seen those fancy ass buffets in Las Vegas? They're like sixty dollars a plate, bro. <laughs> I'm talking the fancy buffets. I'm not talking hometown buffet. <laughs> You're so funny. Shit, You're hometown like... buffet be pricey sometimes. I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to pay $25 for this. What are y'all cooking over here, Golden Corral? Come on. <laughs> oh, man. I'm never going back to Golden Corral ever again, by the way. Oh, that It looked really good, but I didn't like how, like, uh, it was just messy. Anyways, Ten Ruza says, would you rather have boss like TK than certain individuals who know about a toxic, abusive relationship and cover it up? Uh, that's true. Can't argue that. Jared says, so does Jack Perry have a good court case against AEW? Looks like he was suspended for no reason other than being assaulted. From my understanding is that AEW ran through all like the le legalities of all of this. So I think on the legal side, they are... Uh, most likely okay from what i know but i'm not a lawyer i don't know about that stuff if i was uh jackson perry himself i would turn it into a bit yeah that's all you can do i'd be like i'm suing these motherfuckers and then make my thing we got blocka here who says i think airing that was short-sighted and not best for long-term aw business as a fan i'd love for aw to stay focused on the future they are osprey came out and, and told us Swayze says Vince got spit on and took it to the took it to the chin. Tracy WV says, so I love Will, but I love but I have to say when he came out and said what he said bothered me. Triple H didn't specify Will. So with Will throwing out those shots, just confirmed it. Um, this was very read between the lines. If you don't have to say someone's name, you know who they're talking about. And I do not blame Will Ospreay for being upset and wanting to say something. I do yeah. not blame him at all for that. Yeah, kind of being like trying to clear his name is like, you guys, we all know he, he didn't say it was him, but we all know who you're talking about, dude. Exactly. Skywalker's view here says had to put something in the collection plate because Reg is out here preaching. Go, Reg. Thank Leonard, you, <laughs> Leonard Aarons III says having another physical altercation less than one year after his last one is a fireable offense. He went at TK in the video and in any other walk of life, he's leaving in handcuffs. At the end of the day, punk's about punk. Yep. If this had happened at Sprint, they're like, he's in the back of a cop car at the end of this. Ryan Place says, do you think Punk looks at Khan and says, deal with it? <laughs> I don't get this one. It's a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like he put on a pair of sunglasses and he was like, deal with it after the whole thing. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. I didn't get that one. Jeff Browning says CM Punk is a 40 year old veteran here. Biggest show of all time. Can't keep that in your locker room. That's what I'm saying, dude. He knows he's been to the biggest show. Denise, he's been at WrestleMania. He's been at the top. You know what this is. Why are you doing this right now? Yeah, I know. It's, it's so unfortunate, right? It's, it's AEW's biggest show. And we had no idea that this was happening, you know? I mean, like he, the news came pretty fast, so. Like, he could have found Jack Perry at the end of the show and fought him. It would have been way different. We're yeah. done with the show. I could deal with this. It's about to start, and you're doing this. Selfish. First match on the card. First quit right match. before his first match. First match, Denise. He's starting the show, and you quit after you just attack somebody? Come on, dude. Jake Daniels says, why wasn't Kenny Omega, Young Bucks, and others fired for the first fight? Tony Khan is a joke. AEW is a hypocritical place. I feel like they're, I mean, God, they haven't really spoken about that. I feel like there's still so much details that we don't know. Besides, there was biting. Didn't Larry get kicked or something? Mm. <laughs> yeah, a dog, uh, some of the dog was involved there. But it's all Tony Khan wasn't at that fight. There you go. 
Okay. Yeah, Tony Khan was with us. He was chatting it up with us. And he had, poor guy had no idea this was going on back there. Yeah. That's and the I, difference. I, 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 to this day, still feel bad for Tony Khan on all of that, yeah. by the way, because that shit sucks. And especially what knowing we've been in there with Tony and how the mind state he is after a show, like he doesn't have time for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's the thing. Like, I truly feel that Tony is really proud of the work that they do on AEW and the backstage drama. It's just like, it sucks. You know, I, I do feel bad. Like, I didn't sign up for this part, you guys, but that's what comes along with the wrestling business. And it's just really unfortunate that that's what keeps getting me is, like, people are like, uh, oh, this happened in, in backstage here and see a buck. Is this like, this is every locker room ever, you guys. Like, these are the situations that will continue to happen. It's unfortunate, but, like, how you deal with these situations, exactly situations like this determines on the future of what happens here. So how you kind of deal with what happened tonight and sitting back and reflecting is de going to determine the future of your company. Will DeBeast here says, Reg is spitting facts. It reminds me of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Both sides effed up, and this happens when you run your mouth. But at the end of the day, you cannot lay hands on a coworker. Ask Vince. Exactly. We got Infallible Foul here who says, sure, this looks tame, but we don't know if Ace Steel was off camera taking a bite out of someone. Also, hashtag free Jack Perry. <laughs> Ace Steel wasn't even wait, was it was yo, he was still with the company at that point, wasn't he? But he was virtual, wasn't he remote? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Ace Steel was on on Skype. He couldn't bite anybody. Unless he was biting through Skype, bro. We don't know what ah. kind of technology Ace Steel has. Bring, <laughs> bring the iPad over there. I want to see what's going on. Somebody carrying an iPad. <laughs> put me up, put me up higher. <laughs> <laughs> put me up higher. <laughs> Hey, still, yeah, I'm put me up higher. <laughs> Freaking full screening the video, full screen, full screen. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> King Boomer here says two clowns. Punk beat up airing footage of Punk choking out another little nitwit. Says King Boomer. We got Hunter Tillman here with a very generous super chat. Thank you so much, Saint Helly. Hey, Kelly Connection. Oh, boy, what a night. That footage literally proved punk right. This was not fun. And even Tony Schiavone looks so annoyed. Why was this necessary? Who attacked my CEO? Damn it. Somebody said he was biting his laptop. Is really funny. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Hunter, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Uh, the out-of-pocket variety show says, Denise, you look beautiful. Bundle of joy. Call this what it is. The name of honest journalism. A.W. is a circus ran by a silver spoon substitute teacher. I'm dead. Oh, He's still biting his laptop. I see him bunk spiting Jack Perry. That's such a fun. Like, all of that's what Denise, I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble. But all of this is just so funny. Like, if you just like, like, if we didn't know anything, and we just watched the show. I would have thought that was the funniest video of all time. But it's just like, everybody's <laughs> so sad. So I'm like, I get it. I'm sorry. God, I can't wait for there to be another drama so we can just stop talking about this and talk about uh, something else. Let's throw down, Reg. You and I will just start fighting right now. Mm. I went to the Rocky statue, Denise. I'm I'm with it. Uh, I'm I'm legit. I didn't get to go. How dare you go? Damn it! All Denise, right, because you're all business all the time. You don't ever do anything and see any sights. I know. I'm no fun mm. at all. Grapple Geekery says he was part of some. He was part of some of my favorite moments in AEW, but he was the one person ultimately responsible for my least favorite moment in AEW, the All Out press conference. I don't miss him in AEW at all, says Grapple Geekery. By the way, we have had a huge mixture of reactions and responses from people, yeah. and I just want I just want everyone to know that I feel like I really like Reg that you and I are a little bit different on this because mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like you have to look at this from multiple sides, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I don't there's not one right answer to all this. Like, I don't know who was in the right, I don't know who wasn't like everybody was into something crazy. Yeah. And that's why everybody there's there has to be so many differing opinions because there's so many different angles to this. Had he kicked a dog, bro? I would have been like, dude, get this man off of WWE TV. Like, what are you doing here? Like, that's, right. that's extreme. That would be like mm -hmm. totally different case, like a different situation. You know, yeah, like if they were if the, the, the video of the other fight that they were talking about earlier and Larry was in there and a still like things could have been different. But this was, you know, this was bro. Something. I would have thrown down, man. Even if it's not my dog, I would have been pissed. Now, nah, people don't play with them dogs. Mm -mm. Farron Wolf here says storm was gold, lame crown, zero reaction for Sh uh, Shirakawa. I mm. think the people were still processing what had gone down earlier, to be honest. Totally. Um, King Boomer says poor people don't like AEW. <laughs> 
<laughs> Remember, wasn't that like a, a whole thing that, that came bit. out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Because I'm... <laughs> You're like, wait, what? I should be having more money in my bank account to be supporting what? <laughs> what are we talking about here? Easy Breezy says, all jokes aside, boy, am I ready for the Swerve title run? Yeah, believe it or not, we had a Swerve Samoa Joe angle, which we probably won't even get to at this point. Jeez, Mr. Acosta please. says, AEW hitting folks with copyright on X, bad look. Are they? I wonder if they already copyrighted my YouTube video, which I was expecting them to, but I put it up there and I'm like, I'll get what I can out of it. Right. All right. We got Toby Schwashbauer who says, thank you for all your work this week. I acknowledge you guys. Thank you so much, Toby, for the generous super chat. Seriously. Um, Red Hood says, why is AEW striking the video they released? It doesn't make sense. They wanted public publicity, but not the one they wanted. I wonder if I've been copyrighted already. Actually, I'm going to look right now, which on YouTube they should, by the way. I have not, by the way, been copyrighted on YouTube at this moment. So as of right now, oh. I am a okay um, we got Fritos Cat here who says Jack Perry in Chicago is going to be fun. My God, it's going to be insane. Lennon Aarons III says Osprey going 1997 HBK to go at Hunter about grinding. Outstanding. Will is an underrated smack talker. And yeah, Will was justified in responding to Triple H. Do you you see, you remember when um when Shawn Michaels did the 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 thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Denise, don't don't I would have oh yeah, yeah you're thanks. Yeah, I like Denise. <laughs> Denise. Denise, I forget sometimes that I'm on camera. I know, I know, I know. But anyways, that would have been funny had Will Ospreay done it after that. (laughs) That's what I was trying to get at. I know, I know. (laughs) Which, by the way, can I just, uh, no, you know what? No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Let's keep going, Denise. Run out of here. Denise, run out of here. I was about to say something and bury my hole deeper. Denise, run out of here. I'm trying to help. (laughs) Denise, run out of here. (laughs) <laughs> delayed grats delayed grats thank you so much for saving me with your super chat delayed grats says in all seriousness does wwe think cm punk is a good fit to train young talent in nxt unless chokeholds are how they discipline and development now well so far i think it's all been all good experiences mine is apparently the booker t thing <laughs> Yeah, Booker T. Red, you broke and you're sweating oh, yeah. now. I'm de- Denise, this is the wildest podcast we've ever done. Oh I my know. god, I, I cannot know. believe this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you trust CM Punk with NXT talent? I'm gonna say yes because yeah. I don't think they're out there being uh if if in an X if an NXT talent were to maybe act in a certain manner, then I'd be like, Oh, you know what? Like you're probably risking it, you're towing a fine line there, but uh I don't know. What do you think? I kind of feel like the the younger generation is the only people like we don't have to worry about with Punk. Like he's only trying to help the younger generation. It's like the other vets and the people that he's been in locker rooms with that you have to think about. <clears throat> Chris Ledeck says, to be honest, I think Tony wants to keep Jack around to bury him and make him worthless to other promotions when his contract is up. Dude, do you, oh my God. If Jack Perry became available and I was Triple H, I would hire him so fast Denise. and put that shit on my show. Him million dollar punk. match, million dollar match on a platter right here. here and you I go. could finally enjoy my buffet. Yeah. <laughs> I would do it so freaking fast. So fast. No so hesitation. Fast. Yeah, totally. I would try to cap it. They're going to capitalize, like you said, with the Drew Mack thing and stuff. But if I had Jack Perry, I'd put that match on. Yeah. Steven Marchulli here says more people will watch Punk at WrestleMania on YouTube than an episode of Dynamite. They gain nothing. Aw. Crazy 101 says AW is copyright striking people posting it. Ooh. I wonder if I don't I wonder if they're gonna copyright me on Instagram because I also posted it on Instagram. And as of right oh, now, it's still up. Yeah. That's what I was. I was like, I'm gonna look and see if they took have taken it down. We got Sheldon Jackson here says, don't forget this Friday show to Umino versus Jack Perry at New Japan Pro Wrestling Windy City Riot. Yeah, Sheldon Jackson ran down the line for us on the last show, and it looks like a pretty good card. Patrick Scrog- Scrogan's DWO member for 10 months says, I think this will work for Perry in the long run. Wait. No, they have. They haven't. Okay, sorry. <laughs> One Cool Dog says, this was just the real housewives of AEW. Oh, oh. That I means you liked it, Denise. No. Why would you assume that because I'm a woman, I watch the housewives? I, 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 I. Don't tell me you watch the housewives, Reg. No, I don't. I was about to say, I was about to low key judge you a little bit. Don't judge me. I was thinking it because you like desperate housewives. I heard housewives. And oh, then, desperate housewives yeah. is different. Is it? It's scripted. 
Well, so is how so is the real I'm housewives though. Yeah. So I'm is the real sure. housewife stuff. That stuff's scripted too, but like it's supposed it's presented as it's not scripted. Mm, all right. And it's too trashy for me, you know? Mm-hmm. No, but, right. I'm not into the trashy stuff. Mr. Mr. My mom's gonna come at me because she loves the housewives. <laughs> Mr. Costa says, Reg, you bug in Perry did not look good in this LOL. See, I agree with on that one, but we all have different point of views here. It's fair. Skywalker's view says all wrestling fans need is Javarius Crittenton to show up with the pistol so y'all have a reference of how real co-worker is, beef is, and can be done. Who is Javarius Crittenton? I don't know. <laughs> That sounds really funny, though. What's his Javarius, name one more time, Denise? Javarius Crittenton. <laughs> Did I even say that right? Javarius Crittenton? <laughs> sounds hilarious. Arnold Nicholson Jr. says, thank you, Reg, for keeping real about Punk and Perry. We also got Blocka here who says, who says, Reg, your he's a diva argument works in Hollywood. Jack Perry is a wrestler in a wrestling company who got punked backstage for real bad luck. I don't agree because we watched CM Punk get beat up on UFC like two times and nobody cared. It doesn't matter. It's fake wrestling. Like people really know how to fight is only like the guy that beat him up. We saw get beat up. So like, where's the line? We got Isaac the third who sent in a super sticker. Thank you so much for being so generous. We got Mike T90K who says over 1K in the chat tonight, Jack Perry equals ratings. I know. Like, even though I said AEW should not have aired this footage, I'm looking at this and I'm going, shit, do we got any more videos we can air? (laughs) See, Denise is all about chaos. That's all she cares. (laughs) I would take a video of just like someone eating backstage a catering. I don't know. Oh my God. That's crazy. Hercules says, Denise, you are wrong. Righteous Reg is correct. Yeah, we should put that, this uh, super chat right here in like a museum or something, I think. <laughs> Farron Wolf and Squeeze says, uh, CC, you have been talking about this for 40 minutes. Yes, I'm fully aware. Stuart James, a new member here of the DWO. Thank you so much. We got Crazy 101 who says, Tony just announced Tony versus AZM. Azumi. Oh, Azumi. Okay, I was mm-hmm. like, wait, what? Woo! Okay. Wait, that's going to be crazy. Keith Duran says AEW really has people talking tonight. Love it or hate it, AEW touched a nerf. Mission accomplished. Agreed. We got Dren106 who says, I just wish Osprey said something we hadn't heard before. I'm all for taking shots, but low hanging fruit is low hanging fruit. But that's why it worked, right? Because the low hanging fruit tends to work. Exactly. And like that's universal. We know this one thing's going to hit for Triple H, Denise, and that's it. We got Rise and Shine. It's butt whooping time. It says not only Triple H grinded on Steph, he grinded on a dead body in a casket too. Ah, oh. let's on just TV. erase that from our memories. On TV too. What a sick individual. Mike T ninety K says, "How do I get an ass like Osprey, bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> WrestleMania forty? WrestleMania forty proved to all of us again that he's the biggest mark in pro wrestling. Telling Cody to introduce himself and Bruce at the end, shaking my head." Demon Murder says Hunter is ridiculous. Leonard Aarons III says trips with that quote on McAfee, which set Osprey off tonight, reinforced the reality that even with Vince gone, McMahon's culture remains very much in place. He said the quiet part out loud, and this is what they have felt. There was a lot of reading between the lines with that quote. Yes. Totally. I got Vasco here who says did not agree with Triple H. Love Will Ospreay's response to him. We have Jay Kane here who says as someone who was trying to give AEW a chance, this did nothing. CM Punk's name is trending and he isn't with AEW. Second, the Will Ospreay comments weren't original. That line was said plenty. Yeah, but it was the way Will Ospreay said it. He said it with some oomph. You know, he did the whole thing, did a little smile. Yeah, he added his, he put, he put his little twang on it too. That's why. He did. John, who says, if your company isn't bringing the income to fund those nice lighter schedules, then you won't have a business for very long. Bro, do you have any idea how rich the cons are? I don't think they do, Denise. Nobody. Every time people are talking online, on I'm like, you guys don't understand how these people's money work. It's way longer than you think it is. We can't even fathom way the longer. type of money that they have. Yes. like, we And the income talk. keeps rolling in for them. Like, on all their business ventures. His dad owns uh, an American football team and also like an uh, 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 overseas football team. And they make a gazillion dollars like all the time. Yeah, like they could literally lose money every year. And, and people are always business, probably forget going, you know. that Tony Khan be playing with like Warner Brothers money. He's not like in his bank account like here's Will Ospreay. Here's a, th-. you know, that's not yeah. like. like you know. Exactly. Yeah. 
Vivi edits says, Tony Khan does not command respect. The wrestlers obviously don't respect him and they seem to be able to do whatever they want with no authority. Uh, I hope, I, I don't want that to be true. I don't want that to be true. I know that's what CM Punk alluded to in the interview with Ariel Hawani as well. But, you know, obviously, you you know, you got to be a little tough, right, as a boss. And it's hard because you got to be tough, but you also want to be nice. It's a fine line to play. I can't even, like, I don't envy any promoter in these people's positions like knowing that 100 plus people you have to deal with some of them might be in this situation where they angrily come at you like it's hard and i don't like authority and how wrestling works and delegation and stuff it's it's tough i don't i don't like i'm not doing it so i can't be like he doesn't blah 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 that because i don't know how it goes up up there Travis Lindsay says AEW has the talent, but not the audience. Chris Ludek says I've had verbal spots on Twitter, but the guy actually admitted I'd win in a fight and I actually respected <laughs> him more after. Oh God, no, I would never admit that to anybody. I got too much pride. Sideshow Bo says I feel bad for Renee. She looks so uncomfortable with the Osprey promo. I knew she's thinking, bruv, I know this dude. I mean, she's just, you know, she's the interviewer, so it's mm -hmm. not like she did anything. So, like, right. you know, it's okay. She's fine. Like, she's mm -hmm. fine. She's just there holding the microphone, and it's her job, right? Yep. So she's not going to have any heat for that or anything like that. She's just Agreed. doing her job. John, who says if WWE can make weed reference, then it's cool. <laughs> they made plenty already. Several. They do. Yeah, they do. I'm into it. Mike T90K says Anna J versus Mariah May was my match of the night for various reasons. Anna is actually hitting a little harder now, which is some improvement. We got William Dyson here who says WCW 2000 is currently trending on X. Oh, God. Doubt that was the desired result. Chris Ludek says, you're poor. I can't relate. I'm loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Eva Cup says, I think Triple H is not going to let that dig get to him because he knows he'll always be to Steph. So probably won't bother him to hear that tired line. Yeah, he's always right. going to be tied to Steph, of course. You know, it's you, wife, don't know, so. you don't know Triple H. Somebody talked about him on the other show. He's it got to him. This is this guy is gotten to often. So just wait for the next interview, the next yeah. interview that he does. He's a, I don't know him at all, but he's a pro wrestler. And what he did, he, yeah, oh, let me tell you. We got Peter Beater who says, uh, Denise and Reg, mm -hmm. keep up the good work, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we got Ernie Phoenix 23 who says, I think TK and Triple H need a Sopranos like sit down to hash all this out. Ooh, what show would you put it on? Because I want to see that show. Uh, who's getting those ratings, Denise? Uh, they got to have like a middle ground somewhere. But honestly, I wish like. I, I, the tribalism, sorry. If every, all the wrestling promotions work together, that'd be great. Ice T, he, he, he here says Punk asked to get released after the EVPs and lawyers attacked him. Asked again when he came back. So he choked a little old Jack and scared Tony to get, and say, scared Tony to get fired. Mm. You think he did it on purpose? Wanted to purposely get fired? Like I said, Denise, he came up with the crew and he fought right in front of the boss. That, those, that looks like something to me. Emily Duda says so Triple H has a dream job he's very good at and a dream girl, so he seems very in love with. His ops needs new material because he's <laughs> genuinely winning big in life. But so is Will Ospreay, though. <laughs> That's the point, right? Yeah, so is Will Ospreay. He's also got a girl he's really in love with, has a child, and is making good money and is doing what he loves. And, and is if, young if, and if, killing it, too. They both are. If Triple H has his ops. If Triple H has all that, why are you talking about me, dude? It's your biggest show in the world. This is WrestleMania 40. Why are you talking about me? Right, right. Because I, I feel like Triple H might have said that. My assumption on this is they didn't get Will Ospreay. Yep. They didn't get Okada. Nope. It's going to look bad. Like, oh, all of a sudden, like, you don't want to come here? What? Like, we're number one and you don't want to come here? That's going to leave a sour to taste. Here. Right. Yeah. Right. And the, the history kind of shows that we land everybody, Denise. It doesn't matter. And now perception is that we couldn't get you. I have to say something about it. Exactly. Alexander Fitzgerald says, on a good note, Penta versus Copeland was a fun match. It was. Ten Ruza says, am I in the minority and wanting more civility in wrestling? I hate the excuse it's pro wrestling for high school antics. Justice for Janelle Grant. Well, I that's agree fair. on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Aaron Garcia fair. says, AW edited out the footage from the segment on their YouTube channel. What? No way. That's why I was like, if everybody's saying that they're shooting out copyrights, that's why I was like, let me go and see if the actual thing is because like potentially they could have got to erase that shit from everything text from somebody. I don't know. Hmm. But I don't know how. 
I know there were some like things signed, like uh, when the shit happened, there was like some signs. But they things. checked all of that though. They checked, cleared it, did all what they needed to do to get this tape out there. There could have been something they missed. <sighs> Johnny says, how do you feel about Mercedes Monet not wrestling until double or nothing? Did you and did you hear the sound she made on the show? My mind went somewhere else. I did not catch that, Reg. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Did she? Or are people just like being she, being thirsty? She, she got beat up in the dark, so it sounded like something. Ugh, oh, I see mm -hmm. what you mean. Okay. Y'all yeah. need to get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> Johnny, but I think this is what I expected in terms of Mercedes Monet and uh, not wrestling until double or nothing, though. Yeah, if you're gonna like do this build up and what they've been doing, like what's the biggest match we can have? How could we kick her into high gear? If we're gonna, if we have not that much amount of time until that show, let's build it up and then make her first match this giant thing. Grapple Geekery says, don't get me wrong. I was hoping after he was fired and at WWE, we'd never hear about it again and we'd all move on. Sorry if I'm not missing him or his drama comes off bad to anyone, including y'all. No, that's very fair because I think, like I said, Denise, there's a bunch of section of fans that are like, we don't care about any of this, dude. Get to the wrestling. I thought, like Grapple Geekery said, that we were done with this. Why are we still even talking about this? We're trying to hype up Dynasty. So I do understand the people that are like, we're still talking about this. But they're doing it because of all of the comments that they were saying about them, both Punk and Triple H and even Pat McAfee. Yeah. I mean, if after this weekend and every time somebody does an interview somewhere, they're saying some kind of offhanded comment about us. All right. We're going to address it then. Yeah. Sheldon Jackson says, because of Jack Perry, this is one of the longest streams, which means Denise is going to have to pay Reg a nice bonus tonight. Get that money, Reg. <laughs> Yes. See, Sheldon Jackson's the one thinking tonight because I'm like, look, see, and number, see, everybody knows if you talk about CM Punk, people are going to show up to listen to it. So why not put it on TV? Hamburger Helper says, crazy episode tonight, BTW. Denise, you look pretty. Thank you so much. Probiotics and collagen are my best friends and water. <laughs> Hugh Janus says, love seeing Mina Shirakawa. And now, um, sorry, say that again. Azumi. Azumi. I don't know. It's Azumi. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mm -hmm. familiar. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, it's BB says Cody proves Will can disrespect Paul now and still be a top star in WWE one day. Yep, literally what I just yep. said. I agree with that as well. Mm -hmm. Rise and shine. It's butt whooping times that Swerve versus Scripps was a dream match. I never thought I needed last night. Get it? Swerve versus. Oh, I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> my t90k says y'all really think the young bucks would let y'all use that footage for clicks y'all hate them and troll them so they hate you and troll you too well as of right now my footage is still up on youtube for now for now for now so watch it while you can guys everybody better screen record it they're gonna try to take it from the internet forever possibly oh my god can you imagine that Enough, no, you can't take anything off of the internet forever. Like, mm -hmm. once it's on the internet, it lives forever. Like, there's no taking anything down. Mm -hmm. Amir F says, if sexual allegations ain't hurting the major company, what makes you think a video will hurt AEW? That's all I'm saying. Good point. Chiba Chib says, Mercedes Monet. Y'all need to go to bed. Oh, <gasps> I just <laughs> got that. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, stop putting Denise in these situations, you guys. Was, you know what I was thinking? Did I pronounce her name oh, wrong? Because I know I've been struggling God. with it. Like Monet, Monet. Like, you know, I was like, maybe it's maybe this person's correcting me. And then I read it again and I'm like, oh, Monet. Eat a Snickers, you guys. <laughs> Easy Breezy says, I just need to know if Reg is going for the co-show in May. Sick ass card. You bet your ass, my big homie. Powerhouse Hobbs is going to be back at the coast. I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. I'll be there. Grapple Geekery says, to end on a fun note, Stat was the one who attacked Monet. I've been seeing that uh, that booking, fantasy booking thing, and I like it. Eva Cup says, I actually thought Triple H was talking about Mercedes because she's not really working now. Mm. I think he, you could add Mercedes to that too, I think, in terms of like, it, like we said, this wasn't just like directed at one person. But it was assumed, not assumed, but you can include Will Ospreay in that. Right. 
Um, we also got Shinedu Ogu. I'm so sorry if I messed up your name. My apologies. Thank you for the generous super chat. Who says, AEW made themselves look desperate for attention by airing that footage. TK needs to focus on better booking and not what CM Punk is saying. I'm honestly more entertained by Logan Paul matches and promos over Osprey. What? I can't agree with the second part. I cannot agree with the second part. In no world, in absolutely no world, is Logan Paul anywhere near the level that Will Ospreay is. I appreciate the super chat, but I'm flabbergasted at this moment because Will Ospreay is up here. I really like Logan Paul, but he's just not Will Ospreay. No. Listen, I, every everybody can like what they like. That's all I'm going to say. <sighs> Well, thank you for being nicer about that, Reg. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Everybody can say what they want. I just, I just, i sorry. I can't. I can't on that one. I see. He, he, he says, your CM Punk versus Jack Vid is untouched. Trolling Denise. Yep. <laughs> it's still, it's up right now. I think it's at 35,000 views, actually. Damn. So, and I, and I played it twice, actually, because, so actually it's at 38,000 views. So Ooh. I played in two hours. So I played it twice because I fudged up the first time and I missed the actual whole chokehold. I think I was just so caught up. And then I was like, I need to rewatch this again. <laughs> yes. Better watch that. Everybody better watch it again before we can anymore. All right, here we go. And we got Devil Kazuya 27 who says Rhodes didn't finish his story against a Samoan Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story that they were trying to, trying to tell if you guys. Sheldon Jackson says, all right, parents, put the kids to bed. For those who stuck around, welcome to speak now after dark. LOL. For reals, honestly. I think that's it right now with the Super Chats. Um, I know we didn't get too much of anything else with AEW, but to be honest, like that was that was really the, the was thing it. to talk about. If you wanted to say anything else, Reg, this is now your opportunity. You have the floor. <laughs> if there was anything else you wanted to talk about in regards to the show that you felt should be talked about. Yeah, I thought the rest of the show was really fun. Somebody talked about the Anna Jay and Mariah May match was was great. Uh, I think putting people like Anna Jay in these situations are what is going to help because if you're in the ring with Mariah May, you got to throw hard. Somebody was like, Anna Jay's been throwing harder strikes because Mariah May is going to force you to do it. And I love her being in situations like that. Anna Jay is really good, and, and, and she showed it tonight, and I hope that she gets more opportunities. Having Okada on your show, Denise, wrestling a uh, local guy and an indie wrestler. I tweeted online. I'm like, indie wrestlers are going to start putting on their resume was squashed by Kazushka Okada on blah, blah, blah date on <laughs> AEW Dynamite. Like, it's now going to be <laughs> like get that part. booking rate up. I'm saying like, I wrestled Okada and they're like, yeah, he beat your ass for two minutes. But still, I wrestled Okada, which I'm super excited about. And I thought that the Samoa Joe and Swerve stuff was great, especially to start the show. And I kind of have like this realization. Denise is like, in a couple of weeks, there's the potential that we will have a new AEW world champion. And that man is swerve. It's a black man. Like there's so much involved with it. Like I could get emotional thinking about like everything connected to what that moment represents and people who are a part of it. It's just like, it's, I, I I'm, I'm so excited. I'm really excited about it. There is some great stuff to get it excited about with AEW. I know that today is this this whole week is not going to be fun for AEW fans. It's not. Mm -mm. But in 10, what is it? 10 days, 11 days, 11 days. In yeah. 11 days, we will be talking about something else. Yeah. And what we're going to be talking about is, like you mentioned, the possibility of Swerve being champion. We're going to be talking about Brian Danielson, Will Ospreay, which I know is going to be amazing. And I'm pretty sure that card is going to be pretty damn stacked. So I have a feeling we're going to be talking about some good stuff in just about give it a, like a little bit more than a week. And we'll be talking about some good stuff. So right. just hang in there. Rise and shine. The butts whooping time says Shirakawa plus Mariah May equals HLA. Oh, I know they did the whole kissing thing. What was going on with that, by the way? Why are we all we were all just kissing each other now? Like what's going on? They know the demographic. Yeah, they know what they want. They know what they want. I was looking at that. And I was like, mm, okay, huh? sure. Girls night out, I guess. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, DeBee says Triple H is so bitter. He didn't get any of the top three free agents. He's like, how dare they rather work for a company where they make more money and have a slightly less stressful schedule? Who wants that? Yeah, I didn't agree with the comments that Triple H made in regards to that. I thought that was, that was short-sighted for sure. Yeah, didn't really like it. 
Um, all righty, guys. Well, there you go. We have been all caught up with the Super Chats. This is the last call. If anybody didn't get anything else or they want to get, this is your time to get, get your shit in. This is it. This is the most Super Chatted show of all time, by the way. Really, Denise? Do you Ever? Want, for me and my channel? Yes. Wow. Uh, unless the CM Punk one, when he came back to AEW, or he when, sorry, when he debuted in AEW, was up there. But no, I think this one's the most super chatted one of all time. Wow. That's Do you want to know this? how many super chats? Mm hmm You sure? I'm, I'm ready. Can you guess? Do you want to guess? Yes. 136. <laughs> We're never topping that again. Ever. <laughs> How? Ever. <laughs> I guess people really wanted to talk about this. That's insane. That's 137, insane. Tracy says. I think it's worse for people who enjoy both. Yeah, it sucks because like I like WWE. I like AEW. I like CM Punk. I like the Bucks. I like Kenny. Insert the Mean Girls mean. I just want to bake cake for everybody and rainbows <laughs> and cake. <laughs> We got crazy one on one who says, "Can we move now? For, can we move on now from all in drama? We will Ooh. see, my friend." Mike T ninety K says, "How big is Dwayne in person? Any backstage drama at WrestleMania? I didn't see any backstage drama, but dude is big, man. He he looks mm. the way he looks like on TV for sure." Um, by the way, not very many people got to see this because it depended on the angle. But when Triple H was doing his media scrum, Nick Khan was right next to him. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people saw that because you couldn't see it from the angle. But from where I was sitting, I was literally watching Nick Khan watch Triple H. <laughs> All in the videos. Um, we also got one here from Rise and Shine. It's butt whooping time. It says, if Copeland and Roman swapped faces, I still couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> what? Guess he thinks they look alike. No, they don't. <laughs> no way. There is no... No way that Adam Copeland and Roman Reigns look like each other at all. So insane. In no universe. Either. Right. Grapple Geekery says, cha-ching. Thank you so much. And Crazy 101 says, AEW. Y'all are amazing. The Forbidden Door would be lit, not going to lie. Yeah, can you yeah. imagine trying to decide who gets over on what match? Again, where do we put the shows? Like, it would be so ridiculous. It really would. Um, all righty. Now that is it for, for right now for the Super Chat. So with that being said, that was our show today. If you guys had a good time listening to us, Reg and I are here each and every single Wednesday talking about Dynamite, okay? We're fans. We enjoy the product. We're here talking about it all the time. So come through. Check us out. I'm live for NXT on Tuesdays. SmackDown also on Fridays and lots of bonus content. You guys can check out all of the WrestleMania content that is up right now on the channel. Uh, if you guys want to rewatch the uh, the the video, apparently <laughs> they're taking it down. So watch it while you can. Reg, what do you got going on? Um, what was I going to? You know, uh, you, you can catch me every Wednesday here with Denise. We had a really great indeed earlier. Um, uh, Graph City is every Saturday. Peace. All right, guys. Oh. Also, one last thing on a positive note here today. Um. Thank you so much, guys, because I have officially hit 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. And Let's go. Thank you so much. I don't even know what to say. We're freaking doing this. Denise, Thank you, everybody. You're amazing. Y'all are great. Everybody that was here tonight supporting and having fun with us, y'all are so cool. Support all wrestling, guys. Support yeah. all wrestling. We'll yeah. see you guys on the next one. Bye, everyone. Peace. peace.